Good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to make sure that you can hear me. So if you can just type in the questions pod, yes, no, <laughs> hopefully yes. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys. All right. <clears throat> so today we're going to go over new things in the school year. And this was a re this is a rescheduled training because at the time I had it scheduled, um, I didn't have all the information released from ISBE that I wanted to have for this. So we did postpone it. Um, we have a little bit smaller crowd today, but I am going to give everybody a chance to get logged in. It's just now nine o'clock. Um, not a lot of earth shattering topics today. You've probably already heard about some of the new things. Um, so we will go through all of those things where, where new things are posted for the school year, things that you might be looking for, those kinds of things. So um, during the session, if you have not attended with us before, you can ask questions in the questions pod. I will answer them throughout the session so you don't have to hold them until the end. Um, also, I uploaded your handout, so if you weren't able to get that previously, uh, you'll find that in your uh, GoToWebinar menu in the handout section. Um, and again, just if you have any questions, um, just ask them as we're going throughout, and I will be happy to answer them. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. So today we're going to talk about our instructions, where you can find those when they're released. Um, some documents that show the 23-24 due dates, not only released from ISBE, but from us as well. Um, we have something that's just about I-STAR dates that doesn't include SIS and other things, so it's more focused on um, due dates in, in our system. We'll talk about exit data. Um, we'll talk about something that is new in I-STAR that I know everyone is very excited about. <laughs> uh, we'll go over reminders. Uh, for this time of year, how you can get individual training. So if you're new, even if you're not new and you need some one-to-one -one help, um, you can register for a training with me and we can do that via Zoom. And then I'll take any questions. This is going to have a Q&A portion of it. Um, and then, of course, how you can get some support from us. So during the Q&A, you can ask me about anything. Um, and I will answer to the best of my ability. If I don't get answers during that, we have a lot of questions. Um, in general, I'll do a Q&A document and post anything in that um, if I'm not able to answer it today. So hopefully I can, but just in case. So our instruction manuals have not been released yet for this school year, but they are coming soon. So the reason that the student approval rec uh, approval instructions have not been released yet as we were waiting on some documentation to come out. So I think we should see that very soon. Um, typically we get our um, personnel approval manual in the winter time. I think that might come out sooner this year as well as our claim instructions. So we have some new staff members with all three of those areas at ISBE this year. Uh, some of you know that our, um, our longstanding employees up there have retired and so um, we have new, a new gang coming in and they're really taking time going through those manuals and kind of evaluating everything. And so they might be a, look a little bit different this year, but I think overall it's going to be a good thing. So we're cleaning those up a bit. So um, they will be posted on our website once they are available. We have those under manuals and guides right on the homepage in the middle. And of course, we'll announce it in our news briefing. So for those of you who are brand new, anytime we have a new manual come out, whether it's a revision or from year to year, we will post the manual and we'll have that bookmarked but we'll also post a changes document. So you can see what is different between the two years. Okay, so next. Okay. So somebody says they printed the 2324 data collection and approvals yesterday, dated September 14th. So is it the approval instructions? Were you on ISBE's website? They did not let us know that it came out. Okay, <laughs> okay, so we did not know it came out. Okay, well then I will get to work when I get back to my desk and we will have that in our news briefing on Monday and I will get all those documents on our website. So I apologize, I did, I personally for sure did not know that, that it was released. So, but that's how it goes sometimes and that's okay. We can deal with that. I'm glad it's there. So even if I didn't know, I'm glad that you guys will have it. So we will announce it Monday. So, okay. 
So the instruction manuals, this is where they're going to be. And they're also in ISTAR. So just so you can see um, how to get to those. All right, as far as our due dates go this year, um, we're just kind of hitting the high points um, as, as far as not just statutory due dates go, but also when our collections are going to be for approvals. And the first thing that we are approaching is going to be exit data. So this is due October 16th. So if you have students in this school year that for some reason you didn't exit last year, maybe you missed a graduate or maybe you had students that moved over the summer, but for some reason they've rolled into your new year and they have not returned for services. So you're not educating them this school year at all. So when you do that, you will delete the record in ISTAR in the current year. And when you open up the record, after you click the red X, it will show you an, an area for exit data. And so what we need to know is when did the student exit and what was the reason for the exit? So a lot of you are going to be looking back at last school year. What was your last pupil attendance day on your public calendar in last school year? That will be the end date because that's the last day they were in your district. And then of course your reason for exit. Now, many of these might be a 06 because they've moved to another district. So that would be a common scenario. Um, maybe again, you missed a graduate or something like that. So you still can provide exit data. We compile all the exit data that's been collected, whether it was put in at the end of last school year or whether you're doing it now, but that is gonna be due by October 16th. After that date, it doesn't mean you can't delete students. So if you don't, um, for some reason, you miss a student that needed to be removed, you can still delete the student, but at that point, we're not collecting that exit data anymore. So it's just not going to get into the report that we submit to the federal government. So after that, our next big due date, biggest approval due date of the year is going to be for our December 1 child count collection. So this is when we're going to take all of the fund codes that are active on December 1st. And we always give time for you to get those records into the system and error free. This year, that due date is going to be February 21st, so that's going to be Wednesday. We like to keep it on a Wednesday. We like to avoid weekends. We like to avoid leap year. So this has been working out well for us for the past several years. After that, um, you're going to have a time period, maybe earlier than March 8th, uh, but it will be due March 22nd, where your district superintendent or someone that they designate will come into ISTAR and approve the child count. So remember that no changes can be made on that child count after the due date in February. So you need to have them involved in the months of January and February before we take the count and make sure that whoever is going to be uh, responsible for approving that number is looking at those numbers comparing them to last year, previous year, et cetera, and agreeing with that. So you need to have their involvement. So again, if it's not going to actually be the district superintendent, maybe they designate your, um, your special ed director or, or someone else in the district that is familiar with the population, you need to make sure that those people are involved. Because again, after February 21st, that data cannot be changed by the districts and they will have to verify that number in March. So between these two dates in February and March, ISBE does take some time to clean up the data. And so the approvals are locked for a time period. So they will work with that data. They will mostly improve data, resolve any duplicates for residential kids, um, but typically, we, they do not take the full two weeks that is set aside. So that's why I say we will probably open for certification before March 8th, but at worst case, it would be March 8th and due on the 22nd. So next, this is something that's new, not the concept, but the date. So May 1st is when any FUNCO DEF students that have a begin date before March 2nd are going to be due in ISTAR. Previous years, it was May 15th. This date has been moved up. Hopefully, this will be an overall improvement for you as well as other systems and relationships that we have. We had a rough go with this this year. Um, so we're, it's been completely reevaluated at, at um, ISBE at that level with IT staff from different uh, 
different applications that are collecting data and what we're comparing to. So we're hoping to have a better year with that. And that due date again has changed to May 1. So those records need to be added and error free on May 1st if they have a begin date that is before March 2nd. So March 1 and before. All right, June 14th this year is when the orphanage Approvals and claims will be due. As most of you know, there's a correction period after this, but you cannot have any additions after June 14th. Typically, this is on the 15th. The 15th falls on a Saturday this year, so we're going to have it due on the 14th, which will be a Friday. July 15th this year for excess cost. I don't know right now if excess cost will have any funding. Most of you already know that for the past three years, we have not had any excess um, monies from other areas to pay this claim. There are no appropriated funds for this claim, so we don't know from year to year, but I do not know at all right now what we're looking at for next summer. It is still on the calendar for now. It's still in our instructions. So right now um, it, it remains and June 15th will be the due date. And then for the end of the year, July 31st is when your personnel approvals, all student approvals and claims will be due except for private facility. As we know, that goes into um, August. So the only thing new here is that personnel has been moved back. It used to be June 30th. Now it's gonna be due at the end of the school year, July 31st next year. So hopefully that will save you some time in um, you know, looking at personnel. Sometimes we have to open that up later for people to make changes and things like that because it does have such a close relationship with the claims. And so we've decided that you know, the report is due later in the fall, so we're able to leave it open longer. And that seemed like a good solution for everyone involved. So, all right, so calendars. These are listings, so the a Harrisburg Project planning calendar is going to be similar to ISBE's planning calendar, but we pull out a lot of the things that relate to SIS or IDEA and just put in ISTAR related due dates, trainings, et cetera. So this is just focused on ISTAR. Now, ISBE's planning calendar, very similar, but it also has some other items with that that are in relation to special education, but not specific to ISTAR. So we've made a, a separate one if you are just concerned about I-STAR dates and you don't want, um, you know, things about SIS and all of that good stuff. So, all right, exit data. This is what it looks like to exit your students. Um, if you have students that have not returned, you're going to have your red X. And whenever you uh, click on the red X, that approval record will open. We do not let you delete anything without looking at it first. So if you hit the red X, it's not just gonna disappear. It will open the approval record. Before you scroll down and click delete the final time, make sure that your exit data is here. So what you would wanna do is put in your end date and the reason for exit. So right now, up until Monday, you're able to click this box here and bypass providing this. But after Monday, you're not gonna be able to do this. Okay, so what you need to do is make sure that when you've deleted your kids that you have provided the exit data. If you have not, then that's when you will look at instructions in our news briefing, go visit the exit data tab, make sure that all your exits are there. Okay, so again, it's due October 15th this year, but you won't be able to bypass providing that after this coming Monday. All right, so. The new hot topic that I know everyone is thrilled about is the interpreter data collection. So several things about this. First of all, I still have some questions into ISBE, so I cannot answer any, everything for you. Um, we do have a webinar specifically for this on October 5th. You're welcome to join us. I would encourage you to join us. Hopefully I will have more information. I have learned a lot about this. Um, over the past couple of weeks, actually, um, even though we have been certifying this for quite some time in ISTAR, um, trying to kind of break the data entry portion of it, but I realized after I started getting questions that I didn't know as much as I should about the content of this. So um, the interpreter collection is going to be reported by every district in the state. Um, if you read the memo, you saw that 
um, CPS is not going to be reporting this in ISTAR. They are reporting it, and actually they have to report more data than the rest of the districts, um, and they will be um, using a, a, a different application to do that, but the data will all end up in the same place. So it is only public districts. I have a lot, had a lot of questions about um, who should be reporting this from co-op district relationships. That's up to your co-op and your district. So if you're a co-op and you already manage all the data for your districts, I would assume you'll be reporting this for you. But that's not for us to say. So I've had a lot of questions about that. Um, so the interpreter is data collection is starting this school year. Um, this was put into statute in January of 2023. But this data for the interpreter portion started being collected in IEP systems and started to be a requirement at that level in January of 2022. So this is not necessarily a new collection, um, you know, or a new a new role at districts. It it's just that now we need to have that data in ISTAR and report it. So you can find interpreter data on the conference summary report for student IEPs. Again, January of 22 is when they started collecting this data. So this data collection is a little bit different than other data collections that we have because we take an aggregate, so we take a total and it's reported annually. You're not putting this on every student approval record. It's not a per student collection, okay? It's an overall collection. So I think that really figuring out and speaking with people who are creating the IEPs, if you're involved in that process, then maybe you're familiar, familiar with this. You may be able to log into your IEP system now um, and see, you know, I know where this data is being kept. Um, I have heard from some clients that maybe some of the IEP systems are going to create a report for you to be able to take from the IEP system and put the data into ISTAR at the end of the school year. So a lot of different parts that may work together here, but the big thing that everyone needs to know is that this is not necessarily a new collection. It's just that we are now putting it in for reporting into ISTAR. So the IEPs have had this for a while. Um, the translation portion of it, if you're giving out translated documents, you know, at meetings, maybe you're, you haven't necessarily been logging that somewhere. So that would be something that will be brand new. Um, all right, so I have a question. This is my first time hearing about this. Yes, we it just got released by ISBE. In fact, this is the reason that I postponed the kickoff until now. So it's not really a kickoff because I'm late, but um, this is I wanted to be sure that I was able to talk about this. Um, so it is brand new. And yes, you would need to talk to, to your director. And I mean, I'm sh sure that the interpreter portion has been tracked on student com conference summaries. But how to get the aggregate number, you're going to have to work together with them because, again, it's going to be reported annually. It's not a per student collection in ISTAR. So how you're going to collect the data and combine it, those kinds of things definitely need to be discussed and be made part of your plan um, moving forward. Now, also, I have asked ISBE if um, we can create here um, a tracking form. So, I mean, it's not gonna be anything extravagant, but it can be something that we can provide to you for you to track this data if you don't already have a way to do so. So hopefully they'll allow us to do that and we would be able to put that on our website. You could have access to it and use it if you wanted to. Maybe some of you have already been tracking this for quite some time. Maybe you're, maybe, um, you know, people who are performing me meetings have been tracking this and you just don't know because it hasn't come up. So. Um, it, it, although it's a brand new collection in ISTAR for us, it is not something that is new um, to those providing the meetings. So again, we're going to have a training on this on October 5th. We will go into a little bit more detail about how the data is entered. I'll try to explain some of the um, areas of, you know, what they're asking for, those kinds of things, because I've, as I said, I have learned a lot about this in the past two weeks. So, and I do have, feel like I've got a pretty good grip on it right now, but I know that I will probably have some questions that I can't answer, but that's good because we need those questions. So this collection is due and I start June 30th this year. Again, it's a one-time collection. 
all of the data combined together. So an aggregate um, collection. All right, exit data. Um, I know we kind of already went over this a little bit, but exit data is due October 16th in ISTAR this year. Um, before the due date, you want to make sure that you didn't miss any exits. So if you deleted a record and you use the checkbox to bypass, this is where we want to come and make sure that all of these have exit dates in them. So if they don't, you need to be sure you get those in there because you want your exit data to be correct going in. All right. Another reminder, mass change. So mass change has been open since August 1st. We still have a handful of clients that have not performed this yet. So this is going to be closed on Monday, October 2nd. So this is coming up this next Monday, we're gonna close it. So if you need help with that, give us a call. We can walk you through it. Um, this is a, you know, I, I understand if you're a co-op and have a ton of districts, but a lot of the people that are waiting are people who are our standalone districts and really this takes less than five minutes that you know we can walk you through this so i just um did this yesterday with a client and i think she was shocked at how fast it went i mean we literally took two minutes to to complete this but what happens is much larger than that it saves you a ton of time so if you want to do mass change and you're not going to change all your records by hand, you need to do that by this Monday. There is a recorded training that we did on this, of course, with the training notes. But if you want us to help you, just give us a call. We'll walk you through it real quick. Just make sure that you do have access to mass change. So um, you'll want to look at the notes and make sure that you're able to do mass change. If not, maybe another user will need to call us and we'll walk them through it. All right, individual training. So if you want to have a one-to-one -one session with me, you can go to our website under Hot Topics in the top left-hand corner. You can fill out this form. Um, be sure that you provide your address for me. Um, if you want to be contacted via email, that's fine. But I need your address because if I'm going to train you, I'm going to send you some goodies. So they would come via UPS. And so we just need to know your physical address in that instance, um, you just check the boxes for the areas you, you, you want to talk to or, or talk about. And usually I get I will get this immediately. And normally I, I am able to stay on top of those and I will reply back to you um, with uh, dates and times that would work for you so um, we can get it scheduled. So if you're interested in doing that, you don't have to be new. Um, but if you are brand new, it's a good way to do a new user training. Um, it's very casual, relaxed atmosphere, um, and you can kind of ask me anything that you need to. And then sometimes after we do a new user training, um, new users will get in, kind of get their feet wet, and then start like, like looking at errors and things like that. And then we might meet again. In the spring, if you're new, um, you know, we can get through claims together. We might have multiple sessions to get through claims. So those are the kinds of things that we have been doing with those in the past. So if you're interested, please just come in and fill out the form. I actually do have um, quite a bit of time right now um, between trainings since it's kind of calmed down and claim season is, is winding down. So if you wanna get on the schedule, go ahead and fill that out. So now um, I'm going to take any questions that you may have. Um, it doesn't matter what the topic is, you can go ahead and ask um, again, Remember, if you want to register for the interpreter training, that's going to be on October 5th. So anyone can register for that, just like any of our other trainings. So if you want to come to that, um, go ahead and check in your news briefing, or, news briefing or on our website under events, and you can register for trainings there. So I will take any questions that anybody has. You can just type them in the questions pod, and I'll give you a few minutes for them to come in. So we finally got some rain here today and yesterday. So when we came in, it was absolutely pouring. So I was afraid I was gonna look like a drowned rat today, but my umbrella saved me a little bit, but I'm so glad we finally got some rain. I don't think the farmers are very happy, but we're happy. It's been very dry here.
Okay. When is the due date for summer orphanage claims? It's November 1st. So we have some trainings coming up for that. And I did just have um, Kendra post the notes. So those are on our website now. I'm starting to have time to get caught up with my notes. Um, so I'm working on, I'm waiting right now on my training server that has all the fake data and fake kids on it. It's had some issues. So after we get that lined out with IT at ISB, um, I'll probably be able to post the rest of them for this calendar year. So November 1st, summer term orphanage is due. So talking about due dates, while I have people here, um, tomorrow, actually Saturday, is the due date for the Fund B claims corrections in for last school year. So we're emailing and we're calling and all those good things this week. So if you have any questions about that, be sure and to ask us today or tomorrow because I'll, we're not going to work on Saturday. So even though that's the due date, so they just kept it open. Okay, I don't have any questions. That's usually the best part. <laughs> if you have Facebook, you want to follow us. Harrisburg Project officially has a Facebook page now. So you can use this QR code to get to our Facebook page. Um, we have a post just about every day. We put our reminder list, upcoming trainings, um, fun facts, all those good things. So if you want to follow us there, um, again, Pretty new concept for us, so we're in the 21st century now, but um, you can follow us there. And if you have any questions for us, please remember to call us, email us. Um, if you need any of that individual training, go over there and sign up. Remember to provide your address so I can send you some goodies. So um, other than that, I still don't have any questions that have come in, so I will let you guys get. Thank you for attending, and we will see you at the next session. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.